everyone, welcome back to Matt Hayes Tottenham blog and to another Premier League match preview. So tomorrow we're taking on Manchester City at the Etihad. It's a 5.30 kickoff, and it'll be live on Sky Sports for those of you who can watch. So today I'm going to be going through uh, my predicted lineup for the game ahead and what I'm expecting to see from, from both sides uh, throughout the match. So before I get into all that, um, I am going to be giving away a shirt in the next week or so. So if you want to be in with a chance of that, uh, winning that, make sure to keep an eye on the channel. And if you do want to subscribe for uh, more videos like this plus interactive live streams, please go ahead and hit that button down below the video and make sure you hit the notification bell so you get notified whenever I upload. Um, so let's get straight into things. Um, I'm going to go with my, my starting 11 first. So I'm expecting to see a, a pretty similar team to what we saw against uh, Aston Villa last week, but with one or two changes. Um, obviously, I think Hugo Lloris is going to start in goal. And the right-back discussion is one that's been going on a lot throughout this week. But as I said in my video yesterday, I do think and I do hope that Kyle Walker-Peters will get the nod over Serge Aurier. Um... I think Walker Peters impressed a lot in his game against Aston Villa, and while I, I don't think he is the the right choice for us in terms of uh, starting right back for the season, I think he is a better option tomorrow. We have to remember Aurier hasn't played since the African Cup of Nations; uh, he's been out with an with an injury. But I mean, he's back. He was on the bench against Aston Villa, but I don't think he has the match fitness to compete in a game against the likes of uh, Raheem Sterling, Riyad Mahrez, Bernardo Silva. So I, I hope it is Kyle Walker Peters tomorrow. Um, in central defence, I think we'll see Jan Vertonghen return. Of course, he was uh, left out of that squad that faced Aston Villa last week, but we've heard uh, a lot that it, there was nothing to it. It was just uh, a footballing decision from Pochettino. But I do think we'll see Jan Vertonghen return tomorrow alongside Toby Alderweireld. Um, I don't think Davinson Sanchez has done anything to, to miss out in the starting eleven, but I think there are just better options there for us tomorrow. And we, I think we need that chemistry between Alderweireld and Vertonghen if we are going to deal with Man City's uh, attack. And it will be Danny Rose in left back. Um, I know obviously Ben Davis signed that new five year deal and he does look to be in Pacino's plans. But I think, again, because of the style of team that we're playing with cities, their pace and the wings, I think Danny Rose would be better equipped to deal with that than Ben Davis. And of course, Ryan Sessignan is still injured, so we, we definitely won't see him playing tomorrow. Now, for the two in midfield, because I do think it's going to be a 4 2 3 1, um, I mean, we, we kind of were uh, expecting a bit to see that diamond in midfield throughout the season. And we saw it against Aston Villa, but I think. It, it didn't really work out and Pacino changed it at half time and he did say you know, it was his fault that things didn't work out. So I think he, he might uh, stray away from that diamond tomorrow, especially in such an important game against such a good team. We want to sign a play that we that has been proven to work for us. So I think it will be that 4-2-3-1. And while Musa Sissoko was out of position against Villa, it wasn't his best game. And I think he might need a break. Um, he might need a rest to, to watch you know, the better players play, which might spur him on. Um, try and fight for that position in the team. So I think it will be Harry Winks and Tongi and Dambele playing uh, in that too. Now as for the players behind the striker, um, of course we are missing Hoingman Son who's still suspended. He'll return next week for the Newcastle game and Deli Alli um, has also been confirmed out for this game. Um, the club have said both he and Ryan Sessignon are, un are undergoing on-field rehabilitation. So they are expected to join up with the squad very soon but unfortunately tomorrow we won't see them. So I think it's... There's not much choice behind there because Pochettino has also said Giovanni Lo Celso will not be starting the game tomorrow and he may be involved in some in some shape, but he won't be starting the game. So I think it will be Lucas, Eriksson and Lamella playing behind Harry Kane. Which, look, it's it's a really strong team. The only position you can really look there and think it should be better is perhaps that right-back position, but I'm not going to keep coming back to that because it is what it is for the season ahead um, and we need to just use the players that we have. But I think that's a very strong team and... Man City are just, they're, they're too strong, to be honest, and it's going to be a very, very tough game. The players that they have, even with a few injuries that they have picked up, Leroy Sané especially, they're still a sensationally strong team, and it'll be a very tough match, but with that team we're playing, I think we can get something off them, but it's important that we don't just sit behind the ball and try and hold out for a nil-nil draw. I think if we go at them, we might actually get something from them, but as I said, it is going to be really, really tough. Now, as for Manchester City's team news, they are expected to make a number of changes from that game against West Ham. Uh, Bernardo Silva didn't feature at all in that game at the London Stadium, but uh, he is expected to start the game tomorrow. And to be honest, it would be surprising if he didn't. Uh, he was, of course, one of their best players last season, and in this, their first real test of the year, and we expect him to play. And Gabriel Jesus, who started last week also against West Ham, uh, is expected to drop out for Sergio Aguero. Um, Aguero came off the bench and scored a penalty against West Ham, but for someone who has such uh, a really good record against Tottenham, you would expect him to play. Um, now Leroy Sané is of course out for the next 8 or so months so he won't be featuring and Riyad Mahrez is expected to come into the starting team um, in midfield Fernandinho still isn't at a, a fit enough level to start the match but um, if Rodri if his performance last week disappointed Guardiola as much as it might have um, Fernandinho may actually be brought into the team 
Now, in the fullback positions, Benjamin Mendy is still out, so Alexander Zinchenko is expected to keep his place in the starting 11, and their new signing, Joe Cancelo, is expected to start on the bench. So um, it looks like it will be Kyle Walker playing in that right back position. So there is a few different um, players missing for Manchester City, but it, it doesn't seem to me that it weakens them at all. Like, I mean, you're missing Leroy Sane and you have Sterling, uh, Mahrez and Bernardo Silva who can play in there. And I do think Sterling is the player we have to worry about the most tomorrow. He's on the form of his life at the moment and especially played up against that right back position, which for us is probably the weakest position in our team. Um, he's probably the player we have to worry about the most, but also Sergio Aguero, um, Kevin De Bruyne, and I suppose the list could go on. Uh, for as long as this video does, but I think they're the players that we do need to worry about the most uh, for the game tomorrow. Now, having said all that, I do think there are certain areas in Manchester City's game that we can try and exploit. Watching them last week against West Ham, I know they went out and they beat them 5-0, but I don't think it was a 5-0 game. I mean, West Ham offered quite a bit in that first half. They weren't creating chances as such, but they were causing problems for Man City at the back. And it's something that we saw for Man City in pre-season as well. They don't seem to be as confident passing it out from the back as they have been in recent years. And they made some mistakes in pre-seasons. There was one or two against Liverpool as well. And there's one player in particular I think we can try and target in that area. And that's their new signing, Rodri. Now, he, he really struggled with that high press from West Ham last, last year, last week. Obviously, that, the, the intensity in the Premier League is a lot greater than what he would be used to in the Spanish League. And I think it's going to take a while for him to get used to it. And it'll be a very tough game for him to go into. After struggling a bit in that area last week, it'll be a tough game coming in against potentially the likes of Lucas Moura and Eric Lamella who are going to hound him uh, every time he gets a touch of the ball. And when when he was in possession, uh, in deep positions, he was really slow. He was he was struggling to make his mind up and stuff like that. And that's something I think we could target. But when he does get into the more attacking areas, he looked absolutely sensational for City. And he was picking out brilliant passes and he was dribbling past players. So I think if we can kind of confine him to possession in those deeper areas, and when he does get it, get on him straight away, I think that is, is an area of the game where we could hurt City. And aside from that... There's not much that you can really look at that City team and think that that's a weakness for them. I mean, their goalkeeper in Ederson, for me, was the best goalkeeper uh, in the world last year um, in terms of his goalkeeping abilities, but also his distribution, his his possession. Um, like, as people have said in the past, he could go and play in midfield and he'd be fine. Their defence, I know they've lost Vincent Company, but he was always injured. He wasn't a key part for them. Um, America Laporte, for me, again, is one of the best centre-backs in the world. And then their full-backs, um, if it is Kyle Walker, if it is Joao Cancelo, they're both really good players. And on the left, Alexander Zinchenko, he's not one of those big names, but I think he is He's a fantastic footballer and he would have to be to get into that team. Um, and then you look at their attack and you see the likes of Kevin De Bruyne, David Silva, um, playing behind Jesus, Aguero, Bernardo Silva, Riyad Mahrez, Raheem Sterling. It's it's a really, really daunting task. But I, I think we may we may have the ability to deal with it because you look at City and realise how good t how good a team they are, but... We're, we're also a fantastic team. I mean, if you look at all the, the setbacks and the the things pointing to a poor season for us last year and how well we went on to do, and the fact now that we have added to our team, and we may only see one of those new signings playing tomorrow. I do hope to see Lacelso coming off the bench, but again, it could be a really tough game for him to, to make it start, so I don't know if we will see that. But it'll be interesting to see as well how Ndombele does uh, his first real, real challenge um, as a Tottenham player. I know it was a tough game last week, but it wasn't... No, he wasn't up against the best midfielders in, in England, and tomorrow he will be. Um, so I, I'm looking forward to see uh, how he fares. But all in all, I think I think we, we can get something off City. Like, my brain is saying a 2-3-1 victory for City, but it, it's probably me being biased, but I do think we can get a draw off them. So my prediction, I'm going to go for a 1-1 draw. Um, I think City will probably take an early lead, and we might get an equaliser later in the second half. But... Regardless of the score, I think it is going to be a game that City dominate um, in terms of possession uh, area and stuff like that. I think they will, they will probably be the better team tomorrow. But I feel like we just have that, we have that ability to just grind out these draws in in these tough games and against the smaller teams, grind out the wins. Um, so I, I'm optimistic. I think we can pick something up, and if we do get a draw, I think that'll be a fantastic result because we're playing probably the best team that has ever played in the history of English football. So to get a point away from them would be great. Now, looking at how we did against them last season, obviously we knocked them out of the Champions League. It was a 4-3 defeat at the Etihad. But I, I don't think we can use that game as a, a kind of marker of where the two teams are at because it was just such a crazy game and we're never going to see something like that uh, happen again in the near future between the two teams. Um, but looking at the game we played against them a couple of days after that in the league, they, took, they scored a really early goal with Phil Foden putting them ahead. And from then on, it was a very even game and both teams had chances. Um, I don't know, we had, even had Juan Foyth in right back that day. And he did pretty well, so 
Kyle Walker-Peters might have a good game tomorrow. If he does, um, I think we're in a really, really strong position. Um, so as I said, I'm going to go for a 1-1 draw. So I want you to leave in the comments down below what you think the score is going to be um, and put down your prediction for the first goal scorer as well. Um, and we'll see who can get it right. Now, as I said, I am going to be doing a giveaway in the next week or so. Uh, the winner for my last giveaway never claimed the prize, so I, I will be running that one again. I'm also going to leave a link to a Facebook group that I'm running in the description down below. And I'm also going to be doing a fantasy football league. Again, link in the description below and the code will be there as well. If you want more content like this, plus interactive live streams throughout the season and different fan discussions during the week, please don't forget to hit the subscribe button down below and click that notification bell so you get notified whenever I upload. If you have enjoyed this video, please don't forget to give it a thumbs up. Thanks for watching.